Oh, it feels so good to be back, like a butt crack and in the Badlands, under the towering form of the Wyvern Cliffs, the Empire of Man, ready to show off some new toys. Master Engineer, in his newly reworked Steam Tank, will be lobbing nades and throwing shade alongside the Marienburg class land battleship. Filled to the brim with all kinds of special gunpowder contraptions, it will be the usual combo of faith, steel, magic, and gunpowder against hordes of barbarians from the north. Frog the Troll King, looks to usher in a new age of winter where mutants and monsters can snack on humanity in peace without being exploded, disemboweled, or otherwise evaporated by big guns. Why is the Empire so mean? Why don't they want to be eaten? Are they stupid? This is an interesting matchup, though. I don't know competitively where top players think it shakes out between these two factions, but I do know the meta will shift quite heavily with Thrones of Decay, as it almost always does around DLC time. So on the Norsekin side, Throg has Fight or Die and the Wintertooth Crown for AoE Unbreakable Goodness, Copious Vomit, and that hefty 28 bonus versus large, which could be really important when trying to crack through the armored shell of steam tanks or land ships. Shaman Sorcerer of the Lore of Metal has Searing Doom, Plague of Rust, and most importantly, Final Transmutation to try and nuke that armored core if they essentially try to blob up and push through or run over the Marauder Horde. Final Transportation, if you get a lot of single entities and some infantry around them together, can get insane value. Three Skin Wolves, Beasts of Tashnar, and Ice Wolves, focusing on the mobility game here to shut down range play and outmaneuver enemy cav. But remember, they are weak to flame, so they have to be very careful with how they pick and choose engagements. Horsemasters and Marauder Javcav in the Vanguard, the Throwing Axes might be a better choice now with the threat of some of these new units. On the other side, the Landship, an unbreakable behemoth that serves as a mobile fortress and weapons platform. The crew has fast fire and repeaters that shoot in all directions, a sharpshooter mounted in the crow's nest, culverin mounted on the prow, and it can run over infantry and melee. It's currently being buffed by the rear guardian special rule from Grundle's defenders, granting additional physical resistance, and it can activate full power to flee from dangerous situations, massively increasing its speed and mass, but making it difficult to turn around and control. Extremely useful panic button when you think it might be getting bogged down in melee. And when it dies, it explodes viciously. You don't want to be anywhere near it when it does. Grendel's defenders are right behind. They will imbue any artillery or war machine with a 15% physical resistance buff. So they are quite literally the best backline defenders you can think of when it comes to cheap infantry anyway. Steam tank will of course be mounted by the master engineer with his own grenade launcher. And this thing has some really cool new mechanics. It can fire on the move, has legit damaging secondary fire from the steam gun and blunderbuss launcher, and armored plating that actually does something now. 100% missile block chance from front armor, 50% on the sides, 10% from the rear. Sounds like some vehicle testing for future stuff. Ho, ho, ho. And the model and textures have been updated quite nicely as well, looking like quite the gorgeous King Tiger. But here's what the battle might really come down to. Skin Wolves are one of, if not the best, Norskin units. They have been for quite some time. But the Empire has one of, if not the best units in the game for countering them. The Knights of the Blazing Sun. So that interplay there is very frequently at the core of this conflict and how it's fought. Keep the Skin Wolves alive and away from Flaming Lances until you have local superiority and you've got a good shot. If they get straight up charged, they're going to die very quick and your mobility game is going to suffer quite tremendously. Which is also why they brought a Burning Man. Mr. Bright Wizard, Flaming Sword of Ruin, and Burning Head gives you everything you'd want against the armies of Norska. Now, when it comes to the landship, it's important for me to point out that at least in this build, it does not cause terror, only fear. No idea if that will change. I cannot remember from the Throne of Chaos book if that's how it worked, but its culverin is very similar to the Steam Tank's front mounted cannon. Not its main way of killing, but certainly an efficient one, especially against enemy cavalry. What it wants to do is force you into close range with that cannon, then weave in and out of combat once you get close, blasting everything nearby with repeater volleys. Can rack up a ton of kills that way. Of course, the master engineer on his steam tank doing the same thing. So Norska, well, they have to get their ass moving and their attack was actually kind of broken up by the rock formation in the middle of the map. They're coming in from both sides and it did slow down their advance to an extent. Skin Wolves try to bait out a Knights of the Blazing Sun charge. They are taking the bait, at least for the moment. Flaming Sword of Ruin activated on the Flagellants and Knights of the Blazing Sun over on that side of the battlefield. And as they get close, that's when the Nade Launcher and those repeater guns are going to start opening up and really causing some serious carnage amongst this Marauder horde. Grenade Launcher in particular, fantastic for clearing out low armored infantry. Really puts some pep in the Norskin step where they feel like they kind of have to stop those two behemoths from firing, but it's not something you want to overcommit to killing, right? 
Both units are still essentially at max killing power, whether they're 500 HP or 5,000. So if you ignore the support and frontline infantry for the Empire, the low armor that Norska has across the board will really come into play as those cheap spears and flagellants slowly whittle them down. Tongo Pack was unable to force the Mermidian Knights to fight. They have retreated, and Marauder Cav will kind of be forced to weather the storm here. If the Culvern wants to shoot them, it will do so. There's nowhere for them to hide, and a big overcast. Final transmutation will give them a good old-fashioned dose of King Midas. Trust the Midas touch. Hashtag not sponsored. And that was a good one right there. Ideally, you'd want to catch some more infantry in there too, but if you see an opportunity to nuke the land ship, the Bright Wizard, and the Steam Tank all in one go, it's hard to pass up that chance, and that will instantly be 1100 value for the Metal Wizard already paid for himself. Throwing the Troll King, making pancakes, that's what he's gonna make, bacon pancakes with his Sledgehammer of Doom. There's quite literally nothing on the Imperial side that poses much of a threat to him right now. Even the Flaming Knights would need a full surround and a long time to hurt him. So the monsters will try and push through and eliminate that threat from the cavalry so they can isolate the big war machines. Final transportation was pretty solid, dealt good damage to Steam Tank and to the Marienburg landship, but they have a really big HP pool, so maybe not quite as impactful as Norska would have liked. And out on the flank, some interesting interplay there as the Marauder Cav runs away from the Knights of the Blazing Sun. A lot of cycle charging on both sides. Skin Wolves are staying in the pocket in this big death ball, working together to charge, cycle charge, and disengage, finding good opportunities. But anytime that Flaming Sword of Ruin comes down, they will look to run away. They don't want to stay and fight against Flaming Damage. They'll take 22 or 25% extra HP damage in those engagements, even from the Flagellants and the regular Spears. Now, taking down this land ship is going to be tough. Anytime you put melee pressure on it, you can activate that full power buff and get a ton of acceleration, speed, and mass to pull through just about anything. Copious vomit from throwing the Troll King, hitting the Halberds, and chunking through the middle of their formation. Landship is free and away from the Skin Wolves who are giving chase. Knights of the Blazing Sun able to kill off one unit of Marauder Cav as they move to the edge of the map and ran out of real estate there. Burning Head coming through and a big cavalry blob, but maybe one that's worth it. For Norska, they have found the Knights of the Blazing Sun, have isolated them to an extent. Fortunately, Direwolves and the Beasts of Tashnar had to bear the brunt of that charge, but better them than the Skin Wolves. And as Throg the Troll King charges into the fray, activates his Witcher Truth Crown, and keeps everything in there unbreakable. That could be a big pickoff for Norska if they can get some of this cavalry off the field. Now, the Marauder Javcav has to be super careful. They do not want to be lined up so that the Carinade, or rather the Culverin, can fire down the length of their formation. Could easily get seven, eight, nine model kills a pop. And this is a speedy, highly mobile army for Norska. If they lose their maneuverability, they're going to be in big trouble and, frankly, lose a lot of their ways to shut down this Marienburg class land battleship. You see the Skin Wolves? and a bunch of the Beasts of Tashnar retreated in the center. Their leadership's not holding up so well right now, but they are going to find the pickoff they want. Knights of the Blazing Sun again forced to charge into the Ice Wolves first, blunting their assault, allowing the Marauder Cav and the Skin Wolves to clean up that engagement and open things up on the flanks. And perhaps somewhat surprisingly, the Empire is winning the melee fight here. Ooh, nasty shot coming in from the Steam Tank. Because Norska invested so much in the Skin Wolves and the Marauder Cav, and the Dire Pack, it essentially allowed the Empire to field more state troops, and they're beating the handful of Marauder champions and regular Marauders that were on that front line. Most of the infantry for Norska is gone. Big copious vomit coming in, corrosive bile just melting its way through these regiments of infantry. Halberds closing in response, Steam Tank knocking over the Troll King with a close range volley. And as the Skin Wolves try to outmaneuver, this Imperial Squadron, which is looking very strong in the center, they're getting blasted apart by the Culverin and these repeater volleys. And that's one of the really cool things about this land battleship. It can charge into melee and continue laying down that withering fire. Salvas coming out from left side, right side, port, starboard, everywhere that thing looks, something is dying at all times. It's a true centerpiece unit. And right now it is causing a lot of problems for Narska. Throg is chuckling. He's in danger. He's been isolated from the rest of his army, maybe fully surrounded by Grundle's defenders. Here comes the land battleship. 1,600 value so far, over 800 kills, and that will continue to rise as Burning Head 
arcs through the Norsken formation, but they'll mostly dodge out of the way. And it looks like that Metal Wizard is biding his time, waiting for that perfect final transmutation. If he gets a good one, this could easily turn things back in Norska's favor. At the moment, I'd say Empire has a distinct advantage, but not a massive one. The landship has 90 armor and a ton of HP, so if Skinwolves and Throg manage to fully surround it, it will not last for very long. But when it activates that full power buff, it speeds away, can push itself out of some pretty sticky situations, and does so there. It is safe once again, and the repeaters will continue their broadsides, their salvos into the rest of this Norskin horde. Marauder Cav, no real point in charging into melee against it. I don't think that even stops the repeater handguns from firing, so might as well just go for something else. Leadership so far has been the biggest issue for Norska. This Flaming Sword of Ruin comes down from the Bright Wizard on the Halberds. They're dropping pretty low in morale, and Throg is right on top of the steam tank, which is having difficulty escaping from the situation, and frankly does not have the speed to get away anyway. Final transportation coming in for the second time this battle, this time melting Halberds, Flagellants, and the Master Engineer. Landship unfortunately not able to be caught by that same spell, but still hitting the majority of the Imperial Army, and that was a solid one. Throg should be able to kill off this steam tank, and that might leave the landship in a precarious situation. Throg is not giving that Master Engineer a second of solace or solitude. It just cannot run away from him. Down to 3,000 HP, and that will continue dropping. Remember, Throg has 28 bonus first large, and I think 60 melee attack base. So he's hitting for like 90 MA, almost like maxed out melee attack, essentially, against large targets, especially when he's attacking in from the rear. So Steam Tank is having no fun right now whatsoever. Beasts of Tashnar doing what they can, but silencing that land ship with them alone might be a forlorn endeavor. Searing Doom coming down from the Metal Wizard. He was caught up in melee for a while, had a difficult time pushing out of the regiments of Halberds and Spears, managed to escape and deal some good damage with the bombardment. And the Steam Tank is two or three hits from death. One more from Throg should do it. And that will be the death of the Master Engineer as the tank explodes and the King Tiger falls. That is a big pickup for Norska. Bounce Bar is still in favor of the Imperials, and they still have a huge nut to crack with that Marienburg land battleship. Those repeater volleys are brutal. Not the kind of thing where you'll just see your HP bar plummet right away, but it just continues firing throughout the course of the battle. It doesn't seem to stop, and every time you look away and then come back, it's got another 300 400 value up to 2600 right now shows no signs of stopping no signs of slowing down Throg is the answer for killing this thing but the question is can he slow it enough that full power won't allow it to escape and that is a question that Norska will have to answer if they want to grab victory from the jaws of defeat in a 1v1 even with all this kiting I am not sure the landship would be able to beat Throg might be able to route him off, but I don't think he'd be able to finish him. And then Throg, with only a little bit of HP remaining, would definitely crush it in melee. Just a question of whether he can catch it in a situation where Grendel's defenders, Spearmen, the Halberds, aren't nearby. Skinwolves are just getting blasted apart by this thing right now. That mobile fortress is just punishing, laying a unholy beatdown on this Norskin horde. And Siri Doom coming down, hitting a Big swath of the Imperial Infantry and a charge coming from the flank could cause a mass rout here. Could be the opportunity they're waiting for. And it looks like that Metal Wizard got a Plague of Rust off. Minus 30 armor just before he routed. Now running for the hills, has one HP remaining. Took that like a champ. And it looks like he's going to be fine. He'll escape. I mean, he may not return to the battlefield with only one health, but hey, he's not dead at least. Oh my god, the repeaters are getting so close to cutting him down. Throg is in the rear. Beating on that land ship, trying to take out that engine compartment and cause it to explode. Cause that crew to abandon ship. Oh, you thought you were running. You thought you were safe, Mr. Shaman Sorcerer. No, sir. There's no hiding from the land ship. Throg into the halberds, into the spears, spewing even more copious amounts of vomit and melting their tickle biddies. A lot of wavering on the Imperial side, but it's just Throg now. Everything else has abandoned their troll king. The Winter Truth Crown was not enough to keep them all unbreakable, and frankly, I don't blame them. You're getting strafed by Gatling fire for the entire course of a battle. It's just not that enjoyable. And Throg is just getting straight up bullied 
with that full power buff active. I don't know what the mass of that thing is, but it's got to be ginormous. Look at that thing move right now. Remember, you can't turn very much, but you can use it to escape and the straight line speed when it activates that engine compartment is really impressive. Only a handful of Marauder champions remaining. They'll be side down by gunfire, vomit coming in, and Throg will make his last stand. But there is no way he is going to be able to carry the battle here. The land ship was just a bit too much. And I think the Norsekin army needed probably throwing axes on the Marauder cap to put a little bit more pressure on the land ship. 90 armor just isn't going to take that much damage from regular javelins. But if you got the throwing axes and you get some good volleys in, that could change things. But then again, I think the repeaters really are going to cause a lot of problems for regular Marauder Cav in general. Maybe like one more heavy hitter with AP and bonus versus large would have been useful for Norska here to help deal with that. Because Throg certainly has the killing power required to take down some of those armored single entities. Did so with the steam tank, but wasn't quite able to do it for both. So I think the Norska army could use a little bit more tweaking there. At least if they're afraid of the power of that land ship. And frankly, they should be. It got 3,800 value in this one. Steam Tank and Master Engineer got 2,800. Throg did a lot of work himself around 2,300. And we got some really good final transportations off with that Metal Wizard. 125 kills and about 2,200 value or so. So, yeah. Really enjoyable game there. The land ship definitely forces some interesting plays from other factions. It's... I don't know that it's going to be quite on the level of the Thunder Barge in terms of killing power, but it just has so much sustain and survivability to escape when it gets caught out. It basically just hits that active buff and runs away, pushes through just about everything, and it will slowly kill you. It's a slow and insidious killer, but man, those repeaters cause some serious carnage, and I think you're going to have to commit pretty heavily to kill it if you want to bring that thing down. Full surround off with monstrous infantry and Throg beating on him would definitely take out the beast.